Dear students, up till now we have only looked at simple scoring schemes. For instance, for a match we have awarded a plus 2 or a plus 1. For a mismatch we have awarded a minus 1. And for a gap we have awarded minus 10, minus 5 or minus 1. So one wonders, how do we assign these numbers? So the answer to the question is that these numbers are arbitrary. But we can find these numbers from the experimental data and therefore award better match, mismatch and gap penalties. So let's take a look at what are the considerations for undertaking this. So as I just mentioned, that if we are looking at sequence alignment, we would want to have an optimal alignment. An optimal alignment would mean that we will compromise between match, mismatch and gap. And the combination of such an alignment would lead to an optimal alignment. On the other hand, the best alignment would essentially be the one which has the most matches. So in fact we are looking for optimal alignments only. So the scoring schemes that we have employed for the optimal alignments till now have been very simple. And I want to explore how we can make these scoring schemes more realistic with you in this module. So the optimal scoring scheme should consider a concomitant or a matching reward for nucleotide substitution and matching. A gap penalty should be uh, appropriately awarded based on the insertion or deletion and more consideration should be paid to the abundant and less abundant nucleotides. So if a nucleotide is known to be substituted by another nucleotide frequently, then we should not mind it as much as for the case where a nucleotide is not known to be substituted by another nucleotide. In case of proteins, if a hydrophobic amino acid is replaced by a hydrophobic amino acid, then essentially the function stays the same. The function of the protein stays the same. So we should not penalize it heavily. However, if a hydrophobic amino acid is replaced by a hydrophilic amino acid, then we should not be very happy about it and we should give a large penalty. So, as I was explaining, what we need to do is create these pairs of which amino acid is frequently substituted by which other amino acid as well as which amino acid is very rarely substituted by the other amino acid. So if we have a list of these pairs, then we need to, uh, we can easily score them in a more biologically correct manner. So the scoring schemes are essentially a comparison of such pairs. I want you to consider this, that the replacement of amino acids by other amino acids or the insertion of specific amino acids into the proteins or deletion as well have specific patterns. So these are formed in the process of evolution where a protein sequence evolves over time and some amino acids are replaced by some other amino acids. The two possibilities can be that the amino acid that is replaced has the same characteristics as the one that is replacing it or the amino acid which is replaced has different, had different amino acid properties from the one that replaced it. So these properties need to be considered. So in this way the function can be preserved and we can have a better match. Next. As you know, in the previous schemes, we were awarding a plus 2 or a plus 1 for a match. But the point is that not all amino acids can be treated in the same way. 
So if some amino acids are more liable or are easier to match, then we should not give them a high score. But if some amino acids have very low propensity for a match, then we can score them accordingly. So can we develop then a substitution matrix where one amino acid or a nucleotide is replaced by another nucleotide or amino acid and we can have a scoring scheme for that. So the answer to that is yes we can do that. We have lots of protein sequences and we can see which nucleotide occurs or which amino acid occurs how many times and for the DNA sequences which nucleotide occurs how many times and that how, uh, in how many sequences they are conserved. So in conclusion such statistics of how many times a nucleotide has occurred and how many times it has been uh, replaced within similar sequences can lead us to construct better scoring schemes in the local and global alignments. And also optimal gap penalties can be constructed by looking at these statistics.